The Book of Boba Fett is kind of a tough series for me. I really like it, at least parts of it, but I understand why the broader fan base really doesn't. And we see the potential in the series itself, I think, for greatness. The first few episodes show us what a series focused on maybe pulpier adventures could look like while also exploring some interesting themes about Boba's relationship to his past trauma and the Tusken Raiders and more. The real problem is, in my opinion, the series got weighed down by I, for one, a really poor finale, a lack of real stakes towards the second half of the show, containing everything to one planet, and of course, what turned out to be the, I guess, overwhelming presence of the Mandalorian and Grogu, though to be honest, I really didn't mind that, and I thought those episodes were handled pretty well. That being said, it seems like we're going to be getting more Boba Fett sooner rather than later. Now, if you don't want to hear anything about future Star Wars projects, click off this video right now. I'll give you a second. But well-known Star Wars leaker Jason Ward, making Star Wars, posted an article about how more Boba Fett is coming, and specifically, he's heard that prop designers and others associated with production are working on several Boba Fett things, including the interior of his starship, the Slave One, or whatever it's called now. And to be fair, we don't really know what that's for. It's very possible that Boba Fett could just be having a big role in The Mandalorian Season 3, but it's also possible and in my opinion likely that we are getting a book of Boba Fett season two. Now I'll talk about in a second what needs to change but I'll kind of just explain my rationale for this. It seems like The Mandalorian takes a long time to produce. There's been these gaps between seasons. I think the book of Boba Fett is a nice way to keep people engaged in that sort of storytelling if there's a year-long break between Mando seasons. I also think that the news that they're working on the interior of his ship leans more likely to it being book of Boba Fett season two, I mean, they already had an interior for the Slave One. The fact that it's being redone indicates to me that it's going to get even more time, and to me, that's a Boba Fett TV show. So what needs to change? Because Disney's in the scary position of perhaps squandering a really big fan favorite character, and if the book of Boba Fett season two comes out, it can't have the same reaction as season one. And you know what? I don't think it will. Part of the issue with the book of Boba Fett season one is I think it had to please too many people. It was not only standing in for The Mandalorian, but really the only Star Wars show coming out for a period. I think they tried to focus too much on the greater universe and not enough on Fett himself. Now that that's been done, I feel like there's almost an infinite potential for season two. Season one was all about him protecting his new crime organization and sort of getting it set up, but we didn't actually see him, you know, do crime, really fight other crime lords. We saw him mess around in Mos Espa. Given that we're getting more of The Mandalorian, shows like Ahsoka and and or lots of content, I think the Book of Boba Fett Season 2 can now afford to be more detached from the main goings-on of the era and can tell, I don't want to say a less consequential Star Wars story, but one less connected to the overall universe. We could see Boba Fett visiting Nar Shadda, fighting other crime lords, facing off against those huts we saw briefly in Season 1. I also thought Season 1 did a good job healing Boba Fett's trauma. Some people are complaining, and I think I understand the complaint that he's moved too far far into being the sort of benevolent ruler of Tatooine. I think in season two, I'd like to see that, yeah, he's still a criminal. He's not evil like Vader or the Emperor. He doesn't needlessly kill people, but he'll knock down competition to his empire. Another strength of the Book of Boba Fett, I think, is the supporting cast of characters. Not all of them. I know lots of you didn't like the Vespa kids, and I kind of agree with that, but Black Chrysanthemum, Fennec Shand, and the Gamorreans, I thought, rest in peace, were all great additions in the first two could be back in a big way during season two. And with the whole Grogu Mandalorian thing now handled, I don't think there's the same risk of Boba having his show somewhat co-opted by this other major storyline and him moving to the background. One interesting option that I've also talked about is if they want to keep Boba Fett somewhat of a benevolent character, I suggest moving him into a Talon card type of role, where he becomes not only a crime lord and a smuggler, but also an information broker. That allows him to work with the New Republic, while still not being what you'd call a good guy. He's a rogue. And I mean, that's even appropriate because in Star Wars Legends, where Talon Card is from, 
on, Talon replaces Jabba the Hutt and moves into a position of power before the events of the Thrawn trilogy, where he's able to help the New Republic from the fringe. So if there is going to be this big conflict, then he's still able to help without actually having to, you know, jump in an X-Wing or gun down stormtroopers alongside Luke Skywalker. I do hope if they ever meet again in live action, however it would work or in animation, that the rivalry between Fett and Han Solo from Star Wars Legends is also maintained because I thought that was really interesting, especially in the Yuuzhan Vong era and beyond when Fett did start to work more closely with not only the good guys, but even Han Solo's own daughter, Jaina Solo. And what's the risk of the Book of Boba Fett being bad, of Disney not learning? Well, there are a few. For one, as I mentioned, you waste a perfectly good character and you can really hurt overall interest in the character, not just as he appears in the show. The new Boba Fett is always going to be a little bit different. He's less mysterious, he's older, he's, you know, got a different build than he used to, but that doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing if the character is handled correctly. However, messing up season two of the show, if it does exist, also hurts the reputation for Disney Plus streaming shows. The Mandalorian season one and two were amazing. Some people are, you know, turning a bit on the Mando season two. I think that's natural when things become popular among Star Wars fans, but I do think the streaming reputation has been hurt a bit by Kenobi and the Book of Boba Fett. If movies aren't coming out especially, these projects need to feel like must watch TV. You can't have people skipping shows because that hurts how people feel about the brand and it also dilutes the brand. Not great. All right, to end the video, I will do a hashtag ask act for those of you who don't know how this series work. If you have an interesting question you'd like to hear me briefly address at the end of the video, leave it down in the comments and make sure you include hashtag ask act. It can be a question about lore, a personal question, whatever. This one comes from Kelborn who says, which ship would you pick for a crew of adventurers slash explorers slash treasure hunters or rather which ship class would be the best suited for such an endeavor either from CEC the Carlian Engineering Corps or CEC excluded I agree they are the obvious choice and for me the ship that I would choose for a really big operation a Corellian Corvette I've talked about it before one of my favorite ships in Star Wars if I needed a large personal ship I would choose that if we're talking something smaller I think there are like a thousand different small transports that work but the Corellian Corvette is so great because for one it's ubiquitous in the galaxy it's also heavily customizable and you can make upgrades without people realizing that it's not one of the 10,000 other Corellian Corvettes in that part of space. That's why they work so well for the Rebel Alliance. And the modularity is really impressive. We've seen Corellian Corvettes with large hangar bays. So if you need space to store things, you know, perfect. Just configure the ship in that way. You can also have enough firepower to face off against any enemies you might encounter. I like the general speed and the design of the ship as well. So yeah, maybe a little big, maybe not what you were considering, but I really like the Corellian Corvette for that purpose. Anyway, that's all I have for today. I'm going to try to do an upload every day this week. We'll see if I'm successful, but until next time, be safe, have a good one, and may the force be with you.